Welcome to this video. This is a tutorial uh, number five in our video series on how to program batch and today we'll talk about if-then statements. This is where the rubber starts hitting the road with batch files. If you've made it this far you're going to start having a lot of fun. With our notepad file I'm going to start by saying at echo off and setting my language to batch. And I'm going to um, make a very very simple comparison. I'll say if one no, I'm going to say if 5 equals 10. Notice my two equal signs. That's not a typo. When we do an if comparison and we compare two things, we should use two equal signs to compare those numbers. So 5 equals 10. I'm going to open parenthesis and say echo true. So this is what happens when a statement is true. I'm, te I'm uh, telling the program if 5 actually does equal 10, echo true. Otherwise, don't do anything. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Um, Compare.bat. When I run it, it gives me um, nothing. It doesn't echo true at all because 5 does not equal 10. If 10 equals 10, let's try running that. And that comes out as true. So if we want it to do something if the statement is false, then I can say else, and open parenthesis again, echo false. And if I run that, why we get true, and if I adjust this to be 0 equals 10, I get false. So we can differentiate between do this if it's true and do this if it's false. Since you don't want to have to type numbers that you already know aren't equal into code to use it for batch, this is a pretty useless program. If I make it slightly more useful, I can say echo type a number and then set slash p number is equal to and gives a little carrot to type on. I can say if the value of number, we use um, parentheses signs of course to differentiate the value of number versus the number variable, equals 10. Now it asks me to type a number. I'm going to say 5. 5 does not equal 10. So now type a number 10 and it does equal. So now you can use your user inputs to determine if something is true or false. This is a little bit more useful, um, but let's go maybe even more modular. If, if I want to do more than one thing, if this is true, it's going to be very difficult because I have to fit whatever I want to do in between these parentheses. So I'm going to, first of all, get rid of my else statement for simplicity's sake right now. And I'm going to say, after this open parenthesis, enter. And then after this closed parenthesis, enter. And the computer says, I've got an open parenthesis. And so I'm going to read everything and do it until I hit a closed parenthesis if the statement is true. If the statement is false, I'm going to find this closed parenthesis and then continue on after that closed parenthesis because I don't want a false statement to have anything done that's in between these parentheses. So in this case, I'll uh, move this pause inside the parentheses. So now I've got two different commands in the parentheses. I've got a true, or I've got an echo command, and I've got a pause command. And you'll see that our program is able to do two different things. Um, so if 10 equals 10, then it knows to say true, and it knows to pause. So it successfully read these two lines. Uh, now how do I fit that else in there? else, and I open parenthesis, and then I have the exact same format. Echo false, pause. And if I run this and I choose a number that's not 10, false. So it's uh, successfully skipping the true statements and going into the false statements. So now I have a comparison. If number equals 15, then echo true else echo false. What if I wanted it to be greater than 
or less than or equal to. Well, I'm going to, this isn't code, I'm just going to paste uh, this little menu here. And I'm going to, if you don't want to execute something as a line of code, if you want to make it a note, just add two colons in front of it and a batch will skip over it and say, oh, this is a note for the developer to, to understand. So EQU is another way of saying if it is equal. NEQ means not equal. LSS is less than, LEQ is less than or equal to, and so on and so forth. So I can delete my two equal signs and I can say LEQ, if it is less than or equal to 15, echo, and I'll say num, and these variables are case sensitive, is less than or equal to 15. And if it's false, then I can take this line of code, control C, control V is not less than or equal to 15. And I put that on the wrong line. There we go. Wait, so I'm gonna run that. 12, 12 is less than or equal to 15. And if I do the opposite, 18. 18 is not less than or equal to 15. So we're getting true logical statements. I'm going to put these in the description if you uh, need to reference them. Another thing, um, we can invert the statement by saying if not number is less than or equal to 15. And that will just make the opposite logic true. In this case, if I enter 18, 18 is less than or equal to 15 because it makes the opposite true. So if not is a good statement inverter. Now what if there was more than one case that I needed to look through? Um, what if I needed to know if it was exactly 100 or something like that? Then I would say if, and I have my statement if it's true, and then I have else, and instead of just else, I can say if, and then have a whole nother set of things. Let's say else if number is equal to 100, then do this, and so on and so forth. So you can have many, many if statements within one if statement. Uh, hope that doesn't get too confusing. Uh, it can help to indent with every if statement. Um, so you can differentiate what's what, but um, there's a lot of different ways of handling if-then statements. No particularly correct way. Some ways are uh, less confusing than others. This is especially useful if you want to make a menu of some sort. So I can say, what would you like to do? math, and we know how to do math from our last video with the set slash a command, echo, I'll put a one here, two, um, quit, or three, read just some arbitrary things uh, and I can say set slash p entry I'll just say entry like ENT equals and I can say if entry and I'll use the value of entry so if the user chooses one if entry equals, and I use a double comparison, one, go to math, and then I can say math. And if it equals two, go to quit. If equals three, go to 
read. And I can have it pull up all these individual lines of code without having to go through the entire program and things that you don't want to do. That way your program can be uh, functional, modular, you, you can make it do whatever you want, and you can have the user decide what they want to do. Uh, so it's a great way to make decisions for the user, and you can also make decisions autonomously. Uh, I'm going to go through one more if example, and that's going to be if exist. So I want to know if a certain file exists. In this case, I'm going to say if exist, and then I'm going to put in parentheses C users. Now every uh, computer has a different username, and so if I were to run this file on a different computer, then it wouldn't recognize the username. So to get around that, username in parent or in uh, percent signs slash compare dot bat if exists echo true else echo false and I better add a pause pause so now we're going to check to see if compare.bat exists and it comes up as true if I change the name of this to be if then in opposite caps false so that's how you can compare and check to see if files exist on your computer uh, I think that's a good segue into starting to learn how to interact with other things on your computer such as copying files, deleting files, renaming files, hiding folders, and all sorts of things. So we're going to look into more of how to change and interact with things such as files on your computer uh, in our next video. I think we'll cover start and stop programs in our next video. Uh, if this has been helpful, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.